Well, good morning. And here we are again. And uh, this is health check number four. And uh, uh, this morning we're going to look at diet. Uh, the importance of diet in a physical and in a spiritual sense. Um, but here at the hospital, the dietitians are always busy. Um, many issues that crop up and um, I just want to talk about some of those things this morning and um, we're going to look at the Word of God and we're going to see what he says so um, let's start by um, talking about the fact that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit now we've all heard that phrase um, it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, 19 and 20, and says this, Your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you've received from God, and you are not your own. You've been bought with a price. So what this is telling us is that when we give our lives to God, when, when Jesus is living inside us, our bodies are our responsibility to look after them because his Holy Spirit lives within us. So we have responsibilities in looking out for our own bodies. And um, this is very important um, in many aspects. Um, this verse is often associated with uh, drinking, um, smoking, uh, even self-harming. And, um, and these are all important issues um, which are raised and brought up. Um, drinking in moderation is no problem uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, smoking, most people would say, is a big no-no and... and I wouldn't disagree with that. Um, but what I would say here is there's been a lot of emphasis on those two things, maybe at the expense of one or two other issues. And, and the other issue I want to bring up is this whole issue of eating, of having eaten a correct diet. Um, because um, here in the West, we have a massive problem with obesity um, overeating and, and diabetes, which we'll look at in a, a few minutes. Um, so maybe a bit controversial, um, but what I'm saying to you is, let's not focus on so much other things this morning. Let's think about our diets. Let's think about what we're eating and the things we're putting into our body from a physical point of view. Now, I'm going to read to you a scripture which is very relevant to what I want to say to you this morning. Uh, and that this is found in Mark's Gospel, chapter 7. And um, reading from verse 18, where Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says, Don't you see that nothing that enters a person um, from the outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into their heart, but it goes into their stomach and then out of the body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. And he went on to say, what comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is within a person's heart that evil thoughts come, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, uh, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, ar arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and they defile a person. So let's talk about food for a moment and we'll come back to that reading that I've just read to you. But um, we know the importance of food and... Um, in Genesis 9-3, after the flooding and um, Noah comes out of the ark, um, Jesus make, uh, God makes this instruction in his word and says, in verse 3 of chapter 9, everything that lives and, 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 and moves will be food for you. Everything. So 
Now, I don't want to get on to the argument of vegetarians and vegans, and, and, and there are a lot of um, uh, intolerant uh, people to certain diets these days. We've got gluten-free diets, we've got dairy-free diets, because people react, and, and obviously that's something that needs to be dealt with. But um, vegetarians uh, are not comfortable eating meat, um, for different reasons, but I think it, the the Word of God makes it clear that we can eat meat if we want to. That's our choice. So everything is available for us to eat. Um, and and just a, a little aside on that, in Acts chapter 10, of course, Peter has the dream, the vision of the sheep coming down with all the different sorts of meats involved in it and uh, gets told to kill and eat. And he says, I can't do that. And, and we know it's to do with the Jews and the Gentiles. So it's very important that we have a balanced diet. Absolutely crucial. Uh, Proverbs 16, 11 tells us that on its scales and a balance are a delight to the Lord. And, and I believe in many things where we need to be looking at having a balance. Um, and um, <clears throat> we've heard about re more recent times the five a day of fruit and veg that is good for us. We know certain vitamins that we need to have <clears throat> to function properly. Lack of certain vitamins can cause all sorts of problems and diseases. Um, now, diabetes is a huge issue these days. I don't know if you realize this, but here are some statistics that um, I recently Googled and came across. In the UK today, there are 3.8 million people who are diagnosed with um, diabetes. And um, it's suspected that there's another, nearly another million who are undiagnosed, but they have diabetes. Now, 90% of those are what they call type two. Now there is type two and type one. Type one are the people who have got real problems because they need insulin injections uh, and they have a deficiency of insulin and um, that accounts for about 10%. But most, 90%, so nine out of 10 um, have um, type 2 diabetes, which is controllable with the diet that we use. And, and people who tell you have got diabetic issues, that they're not allowed so much sugar, they have to be careful when they eat, and all those type of things. Some of them are controlled by um, tablets. Um, and um, here's an interesting fact that 50% of those who have got diabetes are more likely to die prematurely. Now we've seen recently in the COVID uh, situation that um, uh, diabetics are a particularly vulnerable group. Uh, there are a number of vulnerable groups, but diabetics are one of them. And um, one or two people, uh, some people I know have, have actually failed to get through and have died, have, have been diabetic. So it's a big, big issue. Um, we have abundance of food in the West um, and um, food gets wasted every day, which is really, really sad because there are still places in this world and we need to remind ourselves of this, where people are struggling to get one meal a day and people are still starving. So um, you need to bear these things in mind. Um, I'm not having a go at anyone this morning about um, weight, and it's quite interesting that um, quite a few people um, are registered as obese, um, and I myself could do with losing some weight, and um, I'm conscious of this, and, and um, I'm making efforts. The whole fitness uh, issue is a big thing these days. People go to the gym, they work out. But there's a lot of people who just eat and eat and eat. And and is that honoring our bodies? I don't think it is. And I'm not pointing the finger. I think we need to be careful. Uh, we don't judge. But I'm making the facts available to you 
that there are a lot of people struggling with diabetes and 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 maybe um, there's nothing wrong with a bit of fitness and health uh, and in our bodies. Um, I'm fortunate I've had a job where I've had to keep pretty fit. Um, and I also like my food, as most of you will know. Um, but I was thinking on this with the whole balanced diet issue. John mentioned in one of his uh, messages his love for cheese. Now, John can't live on cheese. He loves it, but he can't live on it. Ben Hyde, my friend, he, he is a pizza fanatic. Now, I like pizzas as well, but Ben loves his pizzas. And, uh, and he said to me once, well, I could live off pizza, Mark. And I said, well, you can't, Ben. I said, because you wouldn't get the right vitamins. And he knows that, obviously. Um, but I'm going to tell you what my weakness is. And my weakness is peanuts. If you ever invite me round for a meal and there's nibbles on the side and there's peanuts, they will not last long. I am a shocker for eating peanuts. Now, peanuts are good for you in certain ways. They, they're very good for protein, source of protein. Uh, nothing wrong with them in that respect, but in actual fact, they're high in salt content and wouldn't do your blood pressure much good if you were living on a diet of peanuts. So we need to be careful that we're getting balanced diets and, and these practical things that help us to look after our bodies. And um, when we eat, um, if you're eating late at night, if you have a meal late at night, you're asking for trouble because you're going to put on weight. Um, some of us are battling weight all the time. And I wish to stress, I'm not having a go at anyone, just making you aware that there are huge benefits in keeping fit, in feeling better about yourselves. Your blood pressure it comes down and you feel healthier and stronger. Let's leave that for a moment. But just ponder those things. Ponder those things because they are important. I really believe that. But I also want to draw your attention to the fact that um, there are spiritual aspects to this, this whole issue. And um, I'm reminded in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 2, uh, Paul says to the Corinthian church, you're not ready for solid food. In fact, I'm still feeding you milk. Now, we know the analogy and it crops up again in Hebrews chapter 5. Um, if if babies never graduated from milk onto solid foods, they wouldn't mature, they wouldn't grow up. And there's a sense in which, as Christians, we need to move away from the milk, which are the basic teachings, and get some of the meat that we need, our protein that keeps us going. These are important things. Um, and... Um, it actually says in, in Hebrews 5 that you should be teaching, but I need to teach you the basics again. And, and if you were teaching, you'd be teaching on righteousness and you'd be able to discern between good and evil. This is Hebrews 5 verse 12. So when we grow on in maturity, we get a level of... Um, uh, a different spiritual level where we understand things, where we can discern things better, where we can be quicker in making judgment calls. And um, I think it's very important that we do not crave the milk, but we actually after the meat, that we want some form of a different diet that helps us to grow and develop spiritually. Let's believe for that this morning. Um, in John 6, verse 35, Jesus declares that he is the bread of life. Wow, how great to feed on him. How do we feed on him? How do we spiritually uh, develop? Um, how would we um, know um, that we were growing mature in, into maturity? Well, I think, friends, there are obvious things here. Um, read his word. Read his word, but don't just go to those passages that you like. 
But in actual fact, you need to go to those the other passages that will feed you, that will cause you to grow. That that may be difficult sometimes, but we need to do that. It's no good just reading the Psalms all the time. Now I'm a big fan of the Psalms. Please don't don't point the finger at me. I love the Psalms, but I can't survive on the Psalms. I need to read some of the meat of the Word. And, and there's some great stories in the Bible that we can learn from this morning. So. We need to watch our diet with the Word of God, but get the Word of God inside us. Feed on the Word of God. Jesus is the bread of life. Prayer is important, and um, that we develop our prayer life. Um, when we first become a Christian, we don't know what to say to God. We say, thank you, for, uh, forgive me, and help me to move on. But as we grow and develop, uh, so we need our prayer lives to develop. I remember I was in Canada a number of years ago with Bob and um, I was asked to speak at a men's group and um, they wanted me to talk about prayer and um, I uh, I wasn't quite sure what to tell them and I said, uh, I looked at the Lord's Prayer and, uh, and I pulled out some points but I actually turned around to all of them and I said, listen, prayer is having a conversation with God. It's you chatting with Jesus. It's you telling him about your day. It's you thanking him for who he is. It's you developing that two-way conversation. Let him speak to you as well. As we let that happen, as we grow in our relationship with Jesus, he talks to us. We hear him. We've been talking about sight and hearing. It's come up again here in the diet. We need the word of God. We need to hear from him, but we need to develop our prayer lives. Fellowship is an important thing. We've been starved of that to an extent, although it's great that we can um, send these videos out to different people and people see faces they recognize. It's great. Fellowship is important. And one day, hopefully, we'll regain that fellowship and be able to encourage one another and build one another up. So important. Remember, I'm going to go back now as I draw to a conclusion to that reading I gave you where Jesus said it's what comes out of a man. It's what comes out of a man that defiles him. You friends are feeding yourself on things you shouldn't be. If you're watching things you shouldn't be, if you're listening to things you shouldn't be, if you're spending time with negative people, wow, be careful because eventually it will come out from within. Those horrible things that, that are listed, that are sexual deviations, problems. Um, friends, they will come out. So be careful what you see. Be careful what you hear. Be careful what comes because it will come out. It will affect your spiritual diet. We need to feed on his word. We need to hear from him. We need to really spend time with him. I've gone on a little bit too long perhaps for this video clip, but I want you to know, have a look at your diet in a physical sense and maybe a spiritual sense because we can all learn great lessons and truths. What are you taking in? What are you giving out? So, so important. The Lord bless you all next time. We will be looking um, at uh, the whole issue of uh, breathing. Now, that's where we're going. We're going to the respiratory uh, clinic for our final look in our five-week series on uh, health checks. Have a great day. Be blessed. Amen.